Let's have a look at the Wilcoxon signed rank test in this video. So first of all, what kind of test is this? This is a non-parametric test, a non-parametric test with matched pairs. So we have matched pairs. Now, recall, what is a non-parametric test? Well, it's a test where we're not interested in the parameters values. We're not interested in the actual values of the average, of the mean, but we're interested in the distributions. We're interested whether we have the same medians, the same middle values in both distributions. Now, in this case, we have matched pairs because we have products, food products, in two places so the same product in two places the same sample in two different settings at the factory and at the shop let's call the destination is probably the shop where they sell it so we want to know whether the median the middle value of that vitamin loss this is what we're interested is the same at the factory which is the first distribution and the destination which is the second distribution so what we are testing is whether the difference in medians is zero, meaning that the median of the first distribution equals to the median of the second distribution. And under the alternative hypothesis, they are, they are not the same, they are different. So do they differ or do they not? How do we, how do we actually calculate this? Like what's the intuition of the Wilcoxon signed rank test? What we do is we take the differences between the first and the second distribution and we calculate them. So for instance, 47 minus 38 is equal to 7. 32 minus 40 is equal to minus 8. 47 minus 35 equals to 12 and so on. Now, what we're doing is we're ranking the differences from smallest to highest. So from small to high. Now, how exactly are we ranking it? We are taking the absolute differences. We're taking the distances in units. So how many units does one value deviate from the other? Um, and for instance, this is how we do it. Here we have a negative one. The absolute value is one and it's the smallest absolute difference. So we put the rank of one. Here we have a difference of two. The absolute difference is also two and it's the second rank among the all. And we do that for all the ranks. The intuition of the Wilcoxon signed rank test is that if the distributions do not differ, if we have the same median values, that means that the differences between them are pretty much the same. So in some cases, in some cases, we will have that the values of the first distribution are going to be higher than the values of the second distribution. In other cases, we will have that the values of the second distribution are higher than the values of the first distribution. And overall, we're not going to have many differences between them because, as we said, in some cases we have positive differences between them. In some cases, we will have negative differences between them. And if that happens, if they indeed do not differ a lot, then the difference between them should be very small. The sum of positive ranks should be pretty much the same as the sum of the negative ranks. And that's what we are testing. But how are we testing? Are we actually comparing the sum of positive ranks with the sum of negative ranks? No, we are comparing the sum of positive ranks with the expected value of the sum of positive ranks. And let me explain that. So let me zoom out, get some more space. So let's go a bit below. What we're doing with the signed Wilcoxon test is that we are comparing the values of the sum of the positive ranks. And let's actually do that, you know, live to see what that is. So what is the sum of positive ranks? Well, we go here to the positive ranks and we add them up. That's equal to six plus eight. Let me just write that down. Six plus eight plus two plus four plus five plus nine. So these are the positive ranks. The positive ranks happen when the values of the first distribution are higher than the values of the second distribution. So six plus eight, 14, plus two, 16, plus four, 20, 25, 34. So the sum of positive ranks is 34. Now, how are we comparing this? We are comparing this to the expected value, to the mean of the population of the positive ranks. And the population would be all the cases of all the food products that we can get from the factory and the destination. And the average, the mean of that population would happen if we would, uh, if, if we would expect a symmetrical distribution between 
the factory and the destination. If we would expect to have this relationship that the positive ranks, the sum of positive ranks, would be pretty much the same as the sum of negative ranks. So under the null hypothesis, if that was true, if this indeed was symmetrical, we would expect this value, this mean of the sum of positive ranks. And how do we calculate it? Well, that's n times n plus 1 divided by 4. What is n? Is the number of observations, which is 9. 9 times 9 plus 1 divided by 4. That's 9 times 10 divided by 4, which is 22.5. And what we also need to know is the standard error of the sum of positive ranks. So the standard error of this thing, the sum of positive ranks of our sample. And that's equal to the square root of n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 24. And that's equal to, it's just some math here real quick, uh, 9 under square root 9 times 9 plus 1 is 10. 2 times 9 plus 1 is 19 divided by 24 equals to 8.44. Okay, so we have our sample data and our expected values, our population data. Now the way we we, we want to test whether they're significantly different or not is by looking at the standard normal distribution. Because as we said, if we would indeed have a normal distribution where the sum of positive ranks would be the same as the sum of negative ranks, we would have this population mean. But we want to see if our sample resembles that, if our sample is actually close to that population mean. So what we're doing is we're calculating the z value of the difference between our sample data and the population data that we would expect to have divided by the standard error of the Wilcoxon uh, sum of ranks, sum of positive ranks, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we do it and that's gonna be 34 minus 22.5 divided by 8.44 and that's equal to 1.36. It's a uh, Hold on, hold on. Yeah, 1.36. Now, how do we interpret this 1.36? Let's interpret it on our standard normal distribution, on our Z distribution, because it's gonna make sense. Recall that on a Z distribution, if we plot this, we would have here, we would have here a zero, and then here we would have a 1.36. And what that means is that at the value of zero, our sample average, our Wilcoxon value in the sample, is equal to the population value, to the mean, to the expected value. And 1.36 is showing us that our sample value is 1.36 standard errors away. So that's 1.36 standard errors away from the expected value, from the value that we expect to have if indeed we have symmetrical distributions. So we want to see if this is a significant difference, because if this is a significant difference, it means we have many more positive ranks. It means the sum of positive ranks differs by the sum of the negative ranks, which means that we had more values where the distribution, where the values of the first distribution was higher than the values of the first, of the second distribution. And if that was a significant difference, it means indeed that the values in the first distribution are higher than the values of the second distribution. And that's what we're testing. Now, how do we do it? Well, we look at the probabilities of the Z distribution. And the probabilities of the Z distribution show us what is the probability that we had this difference by chance. So the difference between the sample and the population data happened by chance. And we look at the Z distribution. The Z distribution shows the values to the left of the tail. So what we can do is we actually can look at this tail to the left because they are symmetrical. We can look at the probability of having a Z value less than minus 1.36. It's gonna be the same probability as here because again, they are symmetrical. So that's equal to 0 0.087. 0 0.087 and let's interpret interpret this. So that's an 8.7% probability probability 
that the difference that we're observing between the the difference between the uh, sample sum of positive ranks and the expected value of the sum of positive ranks happened by chance just by chance just by accident it could have been the case that in another sample we will have a different result now this probability for statistics is quite high it's almost 10 percent probability that this happened by accident so this does not give us enough confidence enough evidence to say that the difference is significant we cannot reject the null hypothesis so we do not reject the null hypothesis we do not have evidence that the medians differ significantly so the medians in the two distributions in the two distributions do not differ significantly meaning that the sum of positive ranks and negative ranks are quite similar according to this data do not differ significantly so the vitamin loss is pretty much the same in both cases factory and destination hope this makes sense we are done